All right, I will turn off Slack while we're doing this, just so we don't get interrupted. We'll let everyone start to come on, so we'll just um, sort of ease into it. Um, uh, okay, we're starting to get people come on now. So, everyone, I'm actually super jacked for this week. Um, not only have I actually, I'm feeling a lot better. The last couple of weeks I've been pretty pretty sick. Uh, I lost my voice at one point. Um, and uh, yeah, which made it a lot difficult. I didn't realize how much, how reliant I was on my voice in this job until <laughs> I lost it. Um, so now I'm feeling good, feeling really good actually. Um, so another week, another interview. And today's interview is someone who I've personally been following uh, and admired the progress of, to be completely honest, for a very long time. Um, Josh uh, Remington's an absolute statesman of the digital marketing space. Um, you know, he's the, he's the director of JR Marketing, which is based out of Queensland, uh, in, you know, Ipswich. Nah, so we're, we're in Harvey Bay so now, so, oh, yeah, so I, I was in right. Ipswich originally, but we're in um, Harvey Bay the last four or five years. Excellent. So Harvey Bay uh, in Queensland and Josh and his team have a proven track record of getting awesome results, uh, especially in hyper competitive local niches uh, like dentistry and things like that. Dentistry, I mean, we, we're going to dive a little bit into that because it's not the easiest space to, to work in and um, I'm sure there's a few uh, things you learn along the way. So Josh, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, about JR Marketing, and, and what some of the um, what are some of the bugbears um, you have about this space, and some of the things that you see maybe other in, um, agencies doing that you know grind your gears. Yep, definitely. So thanks for having me on. So um, I've been in the online marketing space for uh, seventeen or eighteen years now. So the first seven years was um, working on my own projects and e-commerce and things like that. Um, and then um, after that, um, about 10 years ago, I started getting asked from other people and other businesses how that they, they could actually rank in Google and, and things like that. So I started doing a bit of consulting and working with, with um, some yeah, different businesses. And that's where the agency was born from, basically just helping people out and, and doing what I was already doing, but just for um, other businesses. So um, yeah, one of the big things was for the first while was I didn't want to be like a lot of the other agencies that were out there. So I saw a lot of them um, and the focus was very sales orientated on getting clients, but not actually getting the results for the clients. So they were just focused on signing up as many clients as possible. And um, the actual results weren't actually a focus of the agency, whereas I wanted to focus on the results and, and not on the sales and everything else. Um, so, and we've kept that sort of philosophy the whole time. Um, we don't focus on sales. We don't have a big sales team or anything like that. Um, our team's focused on what the actual output of what we do for the clients and not actually on try, trying to sign them on contracts and all that. Um, and because of that, we've, we've got a lot of long-term clients. So rather than the average agency that might have a six-month um, client on for a contract or anything else, I've still got the, the clients that I, that I started working with 10 years ago. So it's um, yeah, we've got a lot of clients that have been around for a long time um, because we try and partner with them rather than just work with them on, on, on one sort of project or one thing. We're, we're working with them on their business to grow. So we partner with them. Over time, we've added different services to the business. Um, when I first started, it was all focused around the SEO side. Um, but over time, as businesses have said, hey, what else can we do or what, what more can can you offer us? We've developed our team and, and built up different services so that we can um, so that we can partner with them and be that long term partner of, of online marketing with them and not focus on just being a service provider and providing something and saying goodbye and and have a nice day type thing, but actually sort of working on them long term and, and making sure that we work with them to grow. And we had a lot of clients and a lot of clients that are are, are close friends and everything now because it's it's we've seen their businesses grow over time and and we've been there for 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 the growth and everything else yeah that's um you know it's funny i see that a lot as well you know um you know you work with clients they trust you they trust they like the way you work you like the way they work you know it's a good you know they don't want to have to go to five or six other agencies for separate sets of services you know it's nice to be able to just work with one person that understands your business and just is like sort of working towards growing it because uh yeah i've seen you've been sort of expanding out into different services social media i think is something i've seen you've been doing a, a fair bit of lately and um yeah it makes sense you know like those businesses really want to just you know they trust you they trust your team they just want to sort of work with it so so what's your who, how's the team uh, what's the team sort of made up with what who have you got in the office there with you these days 
Yes, yeah, so we've got a focus on um, different departments. So we've got a social media department, um, we've got the, the graphics and branding department, we've got the project managers, and then the, the SEO and Google um, side. So it's sort of a, a, a mix and we sort of, as much as we work together as a team, we're, we, we do have our own department that we take responsibility for and, and, and our clients in those areas. And that's the same sort of way that we break up our packages and different other stuff is sort of into those sort of categories and, and work with them. But yeah, it's, it's sort of been, um, the, most, most of the team, I think the, the newest team members probably six months here, but um, a lot of them are getting on a few years now and everything else. So it's, um, we've sort of been developing um, a few, quite a few of them have, have been doing sort of marketing and different things at uni while they're, while they're sort of working and a couple of them have finished the degrees while they've been working here and are now gone full time. So it's sort of, um, awesome. yeah, watching them sort of grow and, and, and grow and learn and add, add more services and more things that they can do, like to really take responsibility, like the social media team have been doing a lot of workshops and different things for clients and, and really sort of expanding on what we can offer. Um, because yeah, they're sort of been around and, and being that part of that growth and sort of know the vision of, of where we want to go and, and, and how we want to help people. That's so, that's so good to hear. I think I think it's definitely a trick that's missed. I think in a lot of agencies is just that internal internal growth of the of the team. You know, like you, you gotta you gotta keep. You know, everyone's. You know, you're you're surrounded by a lot of smart people, the same as I am. And you know, if you continue to upskill and and give them like challenges and opportunities, most people will rise to those challenges. So, you know, more power to you. I think that's um, an awesome way to go. So, what is the what is the day to day look? I get this. I get personally get this asked a lot. And uh, so I'm going to ask you, Josh. So, what does the day to day look like for yourself, um, having done it for so long now? Um, you know, what it, what's your day to day look like? Yep. So, um, for those that probably know that I go by the the term dadpreneur, so I, I'm still very much involved in my kids' life. So, um, drop off the kids. Um, so, starting work sort of after I drop the kids off. Um, work work in the office. So, during my day. Probably no day is exactly the same for me anymore. Um, typically, I'm jumping in and, and checking checking how the SEO rankings and different stuff are first thing in the morning and checking if anything's jumped around or all that. So checking on the data and making sure things are, are going well. But um, being sort of being a business owner um, now, um, a lot of it is different daily. So it may be working with some of the team members, but then it may be just concentrating on actually um, working on, on some of the stuff. I still do a lot of the Google side of it. So a lot of the SEO and AdWords, I'm sort of deep into working on that. But then I also um, do a lot of our discovery calls. So I'll work with a, a lot of the new clients. So I'll get a phone, if I get a message from a um, dentist saying, oh, we wanna do some marketing, but we're not quite sure generally I'll jump on and sort of discuss and actually see if they need help with and whether or not we can help them if they're a good fit um, and just sort of have a chat to them and everything else. So I'll do a lot of those calls um, and that. So it, it probably no day is exactly the same and that's probably why I like it. I, I, I sort of don't like the boring data side of, of things. If I was sitting there doing the same thing every day, I'd probably get very bored. So I do like yes. that we, we do a variety of things and, and everything else and every day is a bit different, whether or not it's yeah, working on some business stuff or it's actually sort of working on client results or just talking to the clients and, and doing some stuff and, and that. And then stuff like creating content as well, doing podcasts and, and everything else all sort of comes into it as well to make sure that we're, we're sort of continuing to, to be active and doing stuff as well. Awesome. Now, guys, if you, uh, for those who are tuning in, same with Insta, hello, Instagram. If you if you have any questions, um, ask them. Uh, the Instagram, Michelle's on there checking. So, guys, ask your questions. Like, a, you know, every week we're trying to bring people on that provide a wealth of knowledge. So you've got access to a very, for to a person that's been doing this a very long time, not just uh, from an agency perspective, but with his own enterprises. Uh, and that's how I actually met Josh is like way back in the day, uh, through poker actually, but like, you know, way back in the day, you know, he's got his, had his fingers in a lot of pies for a long time. So get your questions in if you have them. Josh is happy to answer them. I'm happy to answer um, where I can. And uh, yeah, get, if you are a business owner or starting an agency, yeah, get those questions in. So. 
Um, dentistry. So like, obviously, um, you know, you're pretty well known in the, in the dental space. Um, so, so why, why did you pick dentist, dentistry specifically as your niche? And, um, you know, what are, what are some of the benefits of niching down as an agency into a, into a specific sector? Yep. So when, probably when, when I started, I wasn't really looking at niching or anything else. Hadn't even thought about it. It was just, um, at the time looking at, yeah, looking to help a few people, see what, what, what I could do. Um, and you mentioned poker before that um, that's how we met originally. So um, I knew uh, uh, a dentist through, through poker and um, he had just opened not long ago, to about 10 years ago, he had opened his second practice um, and I knew he was doing a bit of stuff and I sort of just reached out to him and said, oh, do you need, a, do you need help with any of the stuff you're doing? And um, he sort of said, oh, yeah, we're not really ranking well at the moment and I'm not really that happy with some of the websites and a few things. And I said, oh, drop me to have a look and just do a bit of work for a bit of time and, and, and sort of see how it goes. And he's like, yeah, sure. So we just um, started doing a bit then um, and it sort of just went from there. So that guy's um, opened probably close to 20 practices now in the last 10 wow. years. Um, so, yeah, so, and he, he runs <laughs> He runs courses and, and does a lot for, for dentists, so he's a really successful entrepreneur on his own. But just basically from starting in that, um, we basically just got known as being able to work with dentists and everything else. Um, I always say that a lot of the local fields are very similar and everything else. So like um, we work with a lot of different local businesses, but probably yeah, 90% of our clients are dentists. Um, and that's just been for referrals and getting known in the in the industry um, from working and getting the results. Basically, it's um, yeah, it's it's hasn't been sort of us going out. I see a lot of these courses offering and everything else, and they say, oh yeah, go after these high end niches like dentists or cosmetic surgeons and everything else because they've got money and they'll pay big money for for leads and everything else. Yeah, to <laughs> was nothing to do about that when I first started working for him. I don't even think I I charged him. I I think it was just offering offering him to give him some help um i i knew what i was doing from 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 doing my own stuff and so i was pretty comfortable with it but i wanted to obviously show him show him and everything yeah, else and um yeah it um it's just sort of gone from there and yeah we're still working on stuff every day and all that he'll sent me a few messages today on a few different projects and different stuff so it's um yeah it's it's gone from there and we're just sort of worked with different dentists um yeah, and got known from it. So working with some of those guys um, and being asked to speak at some of the things like Dental Practice Zone as a conference and, and a few of the dental podcasts and things like that. Um, yeah, it's just sort of fervid being known as, as someone that has worked with a lot of dentists. Um, even but you have a look at our, our marketing. Yeah, there's stuff about dentists on our website and stuff like that. But other than that, we're not niche down as trying to say that we only work with dentists or anything else. Um, but it is a field that we sort of have done really well with um, and we continue to go really well with. Have you, have you seen, so, so what, you know, it's something, it's something, um, you know, you, you hear a lot, you know, this is more industry, but like you hear a lot about, you know, people talking about niching down into specific niches and like really trying to, you know, focus on that because, you know, resources and stuff like that makes more sense. So, so what are some of the, you know, obviously, like you said, you'll work with, you know, anyone you think you can help you know, it sounds like you'll, you'll, you'll help um, anyone that could, that can need, needs the help. Right. But like, you know, obviously you mentioned you work a lot with dentists. So what are some of the pros and cons of like niching down into like a specific niche, whether it's dentists or cosmetic surgeons or lawyers or whatever trades, yeah. you know, like what, what have you found just in your experience? So probably the big pros are, are that you basically have a lot of data that's coming in for that one industry. So um, you'll know from everything you do that in marketing, the more data that we have, the better that we can make the marketing and the better we can get the results. Um, so I'm able to log into my dashboard and see all the different sites, see what's moving in the rankings. If there's a, different, a change in the algorithm, I'll see pretty quickly which ones have moved or what's moved and, and I can sort of work out quickly what's what's happening and why it's happened or anything else. So um, pretty pretty big um, pro definitely in the marketing side and just getting to know the field. So like being able to um, talk the talk, um, understanding understanding it. So I see so many, like I obviously, because we manage a lot of our clients' accounts and different things, I see so many messages from different marketing places sort of trying to um, sign up dentists and everything else and that they, 
just even simple stuff when I see it and I sort of say, oh, they'll refer to, oh, we'll get you 10 clients a month type thing. And he's like, oh, dentists don't call them clients to start with yeah. and things like yeah, that. So like, just, yeah, just understanding that how to talk to, to all them and just understanding like the procedures, what, what they are and everything else. People sort of um, just think, oh, yeah, they just got heaps of money and they're, they're, they're happy to throw it at marketing and everything else, but they're very, very smart people as well and they do understand the business side of it. So you just sort of have to make sure that you are uh, talking to them as a business person and as a, as a real person that sort of has a business and how you can actually help them as well. So um, yep. that's a big thing. Um, probably the cons are, are always that it's if you've got all your eggs in one basket type thing, um, is hard as well um, if something happens and like a lot of the lockdowns where all the dental practices had to close and different other stuff so um, obviously a stressful time both for for us when we're sort of doing the marketing and also for all the practices so it, it's sort of um, the thing but yeah that I, I always say it is better especially if you're starting to, to find a niche just because you um, you can concentrate on something especially if you're um, trying to get people to work with you and everything else, at least you know who you're trying to focus on. It's the same as what we'll try tell it like a, uh, a client is that we'll tell them that they need to know who their ideal patient is or their ideal client or anything like that. You have to know who to focus on. So you're exactly the same for us as, as an agency and everything else. You sort of have to know who, who is your ideal um, client and, and who you should work with. Um, and if that's a niche or just a turn inside, I, I generally break ours into more being just a local business owner because yep. any any of the local business uh, are going to benefit from a lot of the stuff we do with Google and, and things like that. Um, so whether or not that's a dentist or a lawyer or a hairdresser, um, it's they're going to benefit because people are out there actively searching for what they offer. Yeah, like you said, it, it, it's, it's dentist by virtue of the fact that, you know, you happen to... Uh, you know, you first got a couple of people and but like you could have been doing that for a landscape. Next thing you're, you know, you're doing your niching in the landscape just right through virtual the fact that you, you know, because you're right, like that, that's data and insights, you know, looking at it from a strategic standpoint, you know, there's an update and all of a sudden all your dentists across, doesn't matter where you are, are getting penalized, are getting hit or improving. Well, then you can go, actually, it's not any specific thing to any one dentist. It's just an industry wide you don't get that data from working with all different industries. You kind of just have to piece together. Oh, they're kind of in the same space or the same niche. Yeah, so I can definitely see the benefits of that. And then like you said, the negatives, I've got a friend who's uh, had to pivot his whole business model because he only worked with migration agents in Australia. Uh, then COVID hit, they closed the borders and his basically business died overnight. And uh, yeah. now works for another agency sort of thing because it literally like went from we can um, work and to there's nothing so yeah there's definitely i suppose there's pros and cons to everything like that but um you know you mentioned um you know you do work with a lot of local businesses and stuff what is what are some of the things you see uh you know regularly you know the businesses um doing that you know a, a business the businesses that are going to watch this or are watching right now can um can do themselves to like you know start the process um maybe before they talk to someone like us yep yeah so it's it's confusing for a lot of the local businesses out there just because one they're, they're they're getting marketed to by a lot of people and saying oh you have to do this you have to do that and everything else so it does become very confusing but two a lot of them don't have that background to understand okay where where, to, where do i start and where do I, what do i do so i normally say just try and like keep it simple to start with try and work out okay who your customers are and how are they going to find you is 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 that to start with with having some good signage and, and that on your building to make sure that they can see you or know who you are um, and then is it going into getting some facebook stuff happening and, and posting in some groups and and posting some stuff on your page and all that so just get the ball rolling with some simple stuff before you look at it obviously if you've got a certain type of business and you really need to hit the ground running with the stuff like setting up a, a one for a new law firm the other day and stuff and like having to hit the ground running and making sure that we've got plenty of um, inquiries and everything else. So making sure we've got the website up there nice and early and everything so that we can start getting it ranked in Google and that we can start doing all the Google My Business stuff and, and things like that. And then also th that we've got somewhere to, to run some ads to and everything else once they, they are open. So it really is depending on 
the type of the business, um, probably your budget as well, like if you've got some money in the initial stages, because some businesses find it hard because they've just spent all the, the money setting it up and, and getting it all there. And then they, they sort of need the sales to come in before they can pay for the marketing, which makes it hard because sometimes they need the marketing to get the sales. So, um, yes. yeah, so it is really about, yeah, simplifying it, work out sort of, where are people going to find you? Like, who is who is the the, the customer that you're trying to work, uh, work with, and where will they find you? Is it on Facebook? Is it Google? Um, is it through the the local media? Or is it somewhere else? And and how do you get in front of those people at that time? So yeah, just try and start people to actually know about you because a lot of I see it's too often with small businesses and especially ones that struggle and everything else is they can be really great businesses but just no one knows about them so they they struggle because no one knows about them so you really just have to start getting out there and actually showing people who you are and what you do and and the best way to do that is just basically find out okay where who are your customers and, and where are they going to be or what are they doing and get in front of them whether or not that is getting a website done and, and getting SEO or that be Facebook or, as I said, have good signage or flyers out to them or, or setting up a stand promoting them at the local markets or whatever it is, just um, get in front of the right people. But um, try not to think that you have to do everything in the early days and everything else. Um, there's that many options and everything for marketing. Um, most people forget that probably 95% of marketing actually fails. Um, so you sort of have to be willing to, to, to do a few things, test a few things. Um, and sometimes you have to be seen in multiple places and multiple times before someone will actually remember you and everything else. I think everyone can sort of agree that they've probably driven past places for quite a while and not even realize what business it is for a while. And then they've actually gone, oh, that's, that's what they actually do there. So sometimes it's, it's, it's not a quick, easy thing of throwing a sign up and, and they'll know that you're there. Um, I've driven past places that are on the same street as me for, for ages before I've actually paid attention to what their sign or logo says. So it's, um, Gen yeah. Generally when you need the service too, it's like, oh, we're looking for, uh, you know, roller shutters and you're like, oh, wait a minute, that, that yeah. place has been there for 15 years and I've driven past it. I've never even noticed it until I needed a roll. It's like when you're looking at buying a car and then all of a sudden you just see the same car everywhere, everywhere. you go. Your, your brain's a very, very, very good machine at um, noticing uh, like noticing or ignoring patterns, um, so depending on the circumstance. So it's, uh, yeah, it's funny you say that because like, you know, I, I a lot of businesses think that SEO, Google Ads, Facebook, things like that are, are the silver bullet when it comes to just getting businesses. But so, I'm going to set a flags out here that generate more business uh, for us than ranking for, um, you know, we rank quite highly for very localized, like suburb based searches. Those flags generate more business than any of our marketing efforts. Because um, people drive past, they see the flag, it's got, it's got website written on it. And they're like, oh, actually, oh, I can I can do with a website, I'll go talk to them. So I think people forget that, you know, there's some pretty tried and true methods that have existed long before the internet that work extremely well. Uh, and then the internet, the, um, you know, Google ads and SEO, they're just to extend and force multiply the stuff that already, you know, works well. Um, so yeah. we're getting a couple of questions in here. So Wendy, g'day Wendy, um, good to see you again. Um, so how are some sites like, um, uh, let me bring that question up for a sec. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you're doing well, Wendy. And uh, how are some sites like Wayfair able to automatically have pages for the items you search for in, on Google? So I'm not familiar with Wayfair, but I know I I know I think I understand the concept. Um, so like, automatically have a page for the items you search for on Google. What do you reckon that means, Josh? You... I I think it's talking about the the sort of a retargeting of your of your interest based on on what you search for. So um, I don't know if it would be automatically or it's based on on their some sort of ads or display banners that they've got. Um, I don't know if Wayfair, as, I, as you said, yeah, I, with Wayfair, Wayfair, whether or not it's an um, sort of an aggregator of different sites, so they might be. Oh, no, I know, I know what she's talking about now. So, yeah. so there's a there's a tool that I um, so I was at a com a conference in Melbourne, and I went to this startup, uh, sorry, a like an SEO meetup, and there was a guy there from a company called Longtail UX, and basically what it does, it's a tool that, so like, um, you know. You basically want to like in big e-commerce sites like um, Gray's Online and stuff like that. 
they basically dynamically generate, they use machine learning and AI to dynamically generate pages that have the most, the best chance of conversion. So they'll create like 50,000 experiments and then um, based on the, the data that's moving through, they'll just dynamically create pages as the, as the search results appear. Um, so like Gray's Online and stuff, like, yeah, if you're, um, so like this Wayfair, for instance, if you're searching like a um, cane, cane couch, it will dynamically generate a page uh, based on, oh, there's a lot of people searching for this, dynamically generate a page and then try and rank that page that's specifically for that instead yeah. of having to create indiv individual pages manually for each individual product. Um, yeah, so long, a, a tool like Longtail US, UX does that. And you can do that manually, but it's just the sample side takes a lot le more time. So using a tool that can like do 50,000 experiments simultaneously and work out what the best, what will get the best conversion rate is uh, what um, companies like Gray's Online, Kogan, uh, this Wayfair, that's why I, I, the name's familiar, Wayfair and others, they do that because you know, when you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars that some of these companies make in revenue, you know, t getting an extra 0.1, 0.2% conversion rate on their products is millions and millions of dollars. So uh, these these long tail UX, they charge probably, I think it's like 7,000 a month for this long tail UX. And then you've got to pay for the um, the analysts um, that to do the work. But it works really well because it, you're giving Google that cert, you're giving Google that um, page that's specifically um designed for the search results so it's a very very smart way of doing it just it's the barrier to entry is so high that only the top end of the market can really afford to do it but that's how companies like wayfair do that so um now dad datapreneur you've had that handle for a long time you know basically um since i can remember right so obviously you know you're a pretty passionate uh, father um, you know, there's a whole backstory behind that, but you're a very passionate um, dad. So, so talk a little bit about Dadapreneur. How does that fit into running a bit, like not only an agency, just a business in general? You've got your podcast. Um, yeah, talk to, talk to us a little bit about that and some of the other th things that other people told you as well from um, your podcast about, you know, handling the work-life balance when it comes to family. Yeah, so I've, um, yeah, I don't even know how long I've had the dadpreneur, probably since <laughs> Instagram started or so. Um, so it's been a while now, but it was around when my kids were at that age, that really young age. Um, so, and we sort of made the decision. I was, I was doing this sort of stuff so I could um, work, from, work from home and do my own sort of thing. Um, so, and my wife wanted to go back and, and, and teach. So she, um, she went back and... Um, started teaching and i was at home um yeah with with some young kids and everything else so that's sort of where the the, the dadpreneur sort of came from sitting sitting at the computer and having a, a bassinet next to me with a young young son in it and stuff like that um but yeah it's it's really pushed into everything i've done sort of with the business as well so anytime i've sort of um expanded or done more i've i've made sure that i can still um, have those boundaries where I can still do the stuff with my boys so I can still do school drop off and pick up and um, still do a lot of stuff that's really sort of important and make sure that I'm there for those sort of events so we'll go to the school to, for the sports carnival and or we'll go for a walk in the afternoon with them and, and do those sort of things um, and I think some of that probably came I, I was raised by a single mum and and stuff and probably didn't always have a father figure in my life so I think when I sort of look back on it I sort of think I oh, um, I missed out on a lot of that, so it's sort of something that I want to make sure that my boys have. Um, but yeah, also just yeah, making sure that I am sort of a, a good role model and, and and parent, and and someone that is sort of showing up and making sure that I'm always there for you, for them. So they're probably at an age now where they sort of bit more independent so they get home and want to do their own thing and everything else so you sort of don't get to do it as much as when they were sort of young and you you could do a lot more activities and stuff with them but um yeah it is one of those things um yeah my podcast um parenting plus business equals um so i've interviewed qu quite a few parents um that are business owners on on sort of how they sort of run businesses and everything like that um it's um yeah been going about a year or so now um up to i don't know 30 or 40 episodes or so on that um and sort of them rolling out every week or two type thing but it's um yeah it's it, it interesting that a lot of parents um seem to suffer a bit of that parenting guilt 
of not sort of spending a lot of time with their kids and 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 feel that they're not doing enough and I think social media doesn't help it where they sort of see that see other people sort of and feel oh those people are sort of spending all their time or doing this with their kids and I'm sort of slaving around way at the office or doing this so it, it seems to the parenting guilt seems to be across across the board with a lot of things so um, really getting across to parents that we all sort of go through those sort of things and and it is sort of part of it and unfortunately um, sort of like uh, juggling juggling something there's always going to be something that's getting it your focus at the time um, you're never going to sort of if you're doing something in the business you're not going to really be focused on on what the kids are doing or or or, or anything else so you sort of have to just understand that you sort of can can be doing multiple stuff and and that it's not it's not going to be detrimental to the kid's life and everything else you're still a good parent and you're still doing everything that you need to be um, and you can and you can do both um, and really making sure that you you can build a business around um, your kids and your family and the way you want um, business doesn't have to be nine to five these days there's lots of ways of doing it I think the last 12 months have shown that there's plenty of people that can work from home and do other things and be zoom calling and talking to each other and and everything so there's that much technology these days to be after to, to do things in multiple ways so you can be sort of jumping between sort of working with the kids and doing some stuff and then going having a client call and different other stuff so don't feel that you 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 don't you don't have to use your kids as an excuse sort of thing that you can't build a business at the same time there's it can be sort of done at the same time um but yeah also make sure that you know what your focus is because not everyone that wants to wants to focus on one or the other it could be that you want to build a business and you that that's not a bad thing either that's what your focus is and that's what you want your focus to be yeah i think that's um you know that's that's it and uh, like we all feel it. like i get it. i feel it all the time you know you know you and i uh, select others out there maybe have the luxury uh, of setting a bit more time so like you know with swimming lessons yesterday i was able to sneak away and and do that um not everyone's able to do that uh you know that's that is one of the biggest fundamental problems and it's why i try and talk do real talk with this this kind of thing you know like people people come onto these interviews and talk about how good business is and it's true like we're everyone's doing well but like actually like instagram because of instagram and facebook and youtube and everything everyone just sees the best highlight reels of everyone's life so they don't see the real stuff and you know you, you feel like you live in a vacuum when your kids are like upset because you can't go and attend their car school carnival because you're working or you actually feel like you're in a vacuum but like that's why i like your podcast because it's like actually there's you know everyone goes through the same thing it may be different variations of it but it's all the same all the same problem uh and it's just nice to know there's other people out there going through the same thing because you just don't generally see that stuff on on uh, the facebooks and youtube and uh, i think it's just uh yeah i wish more um you know business owner parents or even people just working parents um, got a chance to listen to your podcast because there's some really good insights. So I've listened to several episodes and there's some really good insights from people that maybe have that balance done a little bit better than say someone like myself. So um, guys, if you get a chance, go and I've put the link down here below. Um, I'll get Michelle to throw that in the chat, um, the link the link to the podcast, the um, Parenting Plus, was it? Uh, Parenting Plus, Parenting Plus Podcast. Business. Throw that in the chat so if anyone gets a chance. Now, uh, speaking of podcasts, um, obviously you've been doing podcasts for a long time. You've got fingers in a few pies. You've got the um, Dentist Secret Weapon podcast. You've got the Two Minute Marketing podcast, which is actually one of the things when I first started sort of getting into marketing, I listened to all of them. So like, you know, so it's, um, you know, credit where credit's due. Like sometimes, um, you know, taking a different approach like that two minute. Um, so what, give me, let's talk about the Two Minute Marketing podcast for a sec. You know what was the inspiration for that and um you know what was you know what was this yeah the inspiration and and sort of um you know what have what are some of the things you've seen come out of the, doing podcasting in particular in that more rich media yeah um i think in the end the podcast is just another platform and i think i sort of found it an easy way because we're not always comfortable on video and things like that so doing the podcast is something you could do even if you're not as comfortable on video um, and like 
I think there's a lot of people that probably find it and, and you sort of struggle a bit to, to feel that the video is going to be good quality or it's going to be the right one to put out there of you talking for a bit of time. So it's, um yeah, I, I don't even know how the two minute one came about. It's probably my attention span of, of <laughs> <laughs> having two minutes and then going to a different idea. But um, yeah, well, I've actually just recorded a new intro for it. So um, I'm actually going to bring out a whole heap of new episodes for it because it, I sort of focused on other things for a while um, in there. But but it, it did well when when I had it running and everything else it was right up in the in the podcast charts and different other yeah, stuff was, when, yeah. when 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 uh, I was running it and stuff like that. Um, and it's still it's I was in there putting an episode on one of my other podcasts um, earlier, and um, it still gets a decent chunk of views every month and everything else without doing anything. Um, so it, it, it still does. Um, yeah, I think I just sort of, I got asked to go on a few um, a few podcasts and stuff like that and found that it was, I was a bit more comfortable with the audio side of it um, and um, then the video side of it. So it was sort of just something that I sort of went, oh yeah, it's something I can, I can do. Um, I always like to be active as well and doing quite a few things as well so um i think it was just a, another thing that i could sort of go oh yeah well if i book some podcasts in i've got something to do or i've got that sort of booked in something a bit different than to change it up as i sort of said earlier i don't like sort of having the the same old days all the time so it's the thing yeah um, um so children children's book uh boxing <laughs> you know you know you always you're, you're always in some quirky adventure the boxing i, I think we'll have to touch on that <laughs> quickly because yeah. uh yeah old dad bod old dad bod had a run and uh yeah. you know are you gonna get in the boxing ring again I actually you, you done? yeah so i kind of sort of say that i did tell tell someone yesterday that i i said yes to a, a boxing fight so my last oh, one was nice. a muay thai a muay thai fight so it was kicks and knees and elbows and everything else um but my knees are still suffering from that so um yes. i said yes to a, a a boxing fight it'll be a charity fight um raising some money for mental health charity um and it'll be in september so i've got a, a few months to to <laughs> get the, the skills bods, back dad bods, uh, gotta get back in the ring get, get yeah, a little bit so skipping get it back up so um it'll be um yeah up in our local area in harvey bay um at the same thing um we'll um i work work with a gym up here and we'll um promote it as well for them and and do some marketing and everything else but yeah they um said they'll put a percent of the tickets and everything to the charity as well and if i want to jump back in and have a fight so i was pretty yeah pr pretty happy My, everyone else was like but you're still like injured and you're still like that i'm like oh i'll work it out that's i said it's good it's boxing I, the knees don't matter as much and I just won't move as much and then i can punch you'll be right so yeah it'll, right. it'll it'll be it'll be good i've got a few months off i have to get, get in, back get into in, get in the gym you know sneak get in the gym. Stuff. i remember when you were training for the last the boxing match you you got pretty fit there towards the end it was uh you know i don't have you maintained the fitness or you dropped off a little bit from the no so probably the injury so one of the one of the injuries was i snapped my pcl which was a the is the basically the ligament at the back of the knee it's not a common one a lot of people do the acl but the pcl is a quite a thick ligament at the back of the knee um yes. and um yeah i yeah i snapped that and it also took part of the femur with it when it snapped so it's oh, um geez. yeah it caused a bit of issues with my knee and being able to do a lot of the the muay thai training i do still yeah. do a lot of the the boxing training and stuff at home and stuff but i'll um i'll start going back to the the gym and do some sparring and stuff again um it sort of that's why with the last one that was one of the motivators was that i actually wanted to keep it up and actually having a set timeline and a fight actually meant that i um yeah, yeah that i could actually cool. yeah. yeah commit to it rather than um rather than not actually having something that i could commit to so um yeah it's it's one of those big things it's like putting it out there like last time i, I put it out there on social media before i'd actually found it done it and said oh sh should i jump in the ring type thing and everyone said yeah so i was like yep well, <laughs> i have to do it now i'm committed so it's yeah, it's one yeah, of those that's, things that's the best motivator in it social proof you know yep. we use it in we use it as part of marketing but it works both ways you know yep. um so uh, got Deliverous Cup of Cleaning. I met with these guys the other day. Um, they've got a cup of cleaning business here in Mandra. And, um, you know, they, so uh, they mentioned, 
I would like to try making online videos to strengthen my social media presence. Solid advice. I don't know who gave that to you, but it's solid advice. Uh, what video editing program do you recommend for a beginner, uh, for a, for a beginner like me? Now you probably, you got a lot more experience, uh, creating video content and stuff like that. So what do you, what do you use, uh, for creating video content? Yeah, I use a few different ones. Um, I still like Camtasia, which is one that does a lot of screen recording and, and different other stuff. And I find it very, um, very, um, user friendly so i'm just gonna accept your instagram i think it must have timed out or something yeah, yeah so. they're just turning it back on now yep yeah yep. um so yeah it's i find it very good um the adobe suite have quite a few um simple ones as well um i guess it depends on what you want to do there's a lot of um ones that can do social media type ones as well like we use one called promo which has um got a lot of templated stuff where you can just add your your stuff in and it's already got the rest of it done so you sort of don't have to do a lot of the the um the, the hard work type thing so because they've already sort of got that it's a, very similar to like a canva program um and then something like canva even has video options and stuff now so there's there is so many options i, I guess it depends on what you want to do um yes. a lot of the times i um find that if if you're going to be spending too much time on it, then you're probably better off using using someone that is actually good at the videos and, and pay someone a little bit of money just to, to get some videos done rather than spending too much of your own time on it. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, you, you don't have to have every skill and, and be able to do everything sort of thing in your business as much as you want to. Um, I still outsource a lot of stuff and still have my team do a lot when I can't do stuff and, and everything else. Um, yeah, be willing to, to get someone else to do it if you feel that you're going to be spending time on it. Um, know, know what your hourly, dollar, hour, hourly worth is and, and if, if you're going to be spending too much of that on creating something sort of thing that you want to test and everything else, maybe get someone else to um, yeah, do it. Um, and, and that, um, but there, there is a lot of, as I said, there's a lot of programs that, that have the templates already done for you for a lot of stuff. So which, um, sort of saves the time because you can quickly record stuff and, and be able to put it in there. And that's where something like Canva and, and everything else does, um, it means that you don't have to open up, um, some of the bigger programs, the Adobe pro programs and everything else. And, and you can just sort of open a, a simple thing and drop in a, drop in a video or an image and it's sort of done for you. I, I totally agree. I think sometimes uh, you alluded to it, but I'm just going to re reiterate it. Like you can sometimes get a bit of analysis paralysis with some, with things like you can overthink. So like at the end of the day, you know, you got that, right? You got your phone. If you literally just record it, post it, most people will look past the, the as long as the content itself is good. Um, don't let, um, you know, don't let the fact that you've got to learn an editing tool or something like stop you actually creating the content. You know, it's better just it's better to create the content uh, and then just get it online, get it done, than not doing it because you're worried about what editing suite to use. So just for context, we use Adobe Premiere here, but like I I think it takes too much time. So Will does it, but he's really good at it, really fast. But I think where I was saying you alluded to it, it's like you you said you would you preferred um, talking, right? And you preferred um, using your voice over maybe. Uh, video so you didn't let the fact that um you 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 weren't uh you preferred audio stop you from creating content you just chose you just worked with the platform you were most comfortable with so you know if you're really comfortable with facebook stories or instagram stories just get on there and do it i think that's um you know so i think it's the biggest rod for most businesses back and they're like oh you know i'm gonna learn how to do this no one cares if it's high production value no one's no one's expecting a Hollywood blockbuster from a business, right? They just want to get good content. Like I explained to Deliverance, I said, you know, just content, get the phone, go, this is how you actually clean out a professional carpet cleaning machine. I'd watch that because it's just genuinely interesting info. So like it's, you don't have to overthink it, just produce content that you would be interested in learning if you were getting into the industry or you think people would find interesting, you know, how to get dog hair out of a couch things like that, you know, people find that stuff interesting. And, and then you start to iterate the uh, start to work on the production value once the quality, once the engagement's there, and then go, actually, it might be worth starting to um, put together a, you know, like, like, this live stream is a great example of that. these first live, these first live streams, were literally Facebook Live, 
I would like set up my phone like that and I would just do it with my phone. And then I uh, slowly reiterated as people started finding value in it. I went, okay, well maybe I can increase the value I, I give by pushing across multiple platforms. So we started using Restream and then it was like, now we got some reasonably high production value, but it didn't start like this, but I didn't use that as an excuse not to start the actual um, interviews. So Wendy's got here, currently my number one hurdle is money in terms of marketing. What are some underlooked and effective hacks when it comes to new business marketing? Now, uh, so just for context, um, Wendy's starting an e-commerce platform, an e-commerce shop, e-commerce platform. So you have a bit of domain expertise there. Um, yep. So, um, you know, what are some things, what are some ha hacks, you know, growth hack strategies that uh, Wendy can use to grow an e-com, you know, e-com business or just a business in general? Yeah, um, I would be looking to piggyback on sites that already have traffic. So, and by what I mean by that is um, sell a few key products on things like eBay, um, Etsy, um, sites that already have the traffic. Um, but when you're doing it, making sure that your username and everything else is your brand that you're, that you're trying to actually build. Um, what that does is one, it gets you a few sales here and there and, and everything else. But two, you're actually utilizing that traffic to, to build up your brand name. Um, because people will be able to sort of look and you'd be surprised how many people will see the name and then go go and actually search for it or jump on Facebook or something and, and see what other products you might have. So um, utilising something like that um, is great. Um, but other than that, e-commerce these days, we have that many content platforms that you can really build on. So um, whether or not it's TikTok, Pinterest, any of these ones, I'd be being active as possible as as much as possible on building sort of up what you're doing and everything else, getting out what you're doing um, to all these ones, because all it takes is just sort of one one to go a bit more viral and get seen by a lot of them. All of a sudden your brand's starting to get out there a bit more and then you can sort of start building on, on that once you've got those sales flowing in. Um, so yeah, it is, um, it is always tough in the early days, but um, I'd be, rather than sort of concentrating on sitting there and hoping that the sales are there, spend the, the time creating as much content as possible and putting it out there on as much many platforms as possible, whether or not it's on, on your Instagram stories, on your Instagram posts, your Facebook posts, your Facebook stories, your, your TikTok, your Snapchat, your, basically as, as much as possible be just getting out there what you're doing, what you are, um, taking sort of photos, taking content, creating videos, um, yeah, just getting it out there as much as possible on those platforms um, because it's really going to, um, yeah, allow you to sort of spend your time wisely as well. Like I, I've said, it, I've seen some even e-commerce platforms that have big budgets and they're sort of spending all this money on marketing and everything else, but they're, so they've got these team members that aren't doing too much sitting around and everything else where they could actually be sitting there actually creating all this content that could be actually getting eyes on the products and everything else. It's, we live in an age with all these different forms. Um, so yeah, you've got this opportunity to be able to show everyone, show the world what you're actually doing and what you're offering. 100%, I, I, you know what could be really cool, Wendy, is if you, you know, like Josh is right, like the con content's king, like the, the, internet, the whole internet, the whole marketing is moving to genuine experiences, genuine content, uh, informative, so, educating the buyer on making uh, so they can make an educated decision right the the internet's always existed to push people towards that you know what could be really cool if you don't have necessarily have uh anything from an e-commerce perspective um right now to uh do content about why don't you document your journey growing this growing this e-commerce store you know I'd, I'd watch that you know it doesn't necessarily need to be specifically i think that's a trap that a lot of businesses fall in when they do um content is they try and do it about them the business what they sell what they do when actually some of the best content is just like you know if i was a, a laser engraver i'd be like oh this is how my machine works or you know like oh this machine just broke down you know this is the process i'm having to go through to get it fixed and it just it just gives people context and then your front of mind, you know, and when you do, and they'll go, oh, okay, I really like Wendy. What, I wonder what she actually does or what she sells. Next thing you have something that they want, they buy it off you and yeah. So I'd be documenting my journey as um, growing an e-commerce store and doing it on the cheap, let's say, or bootstrapping an e-commerce store. 
Um, you know, that real true content, there's a there's a very distinct lack of it, you know, and um, and it's probably the stuff right now that works the best. So, you know, I, I've always th I've always thought about this um, myself, you know, if if it wasn't so monotonous, this like marketing wasn't so monotonous, I would do um, I would be doing documenting it as hard as I could. But, you know, it's I needed to have done it a year ago as opposed to now. But Wendy's got um. When he's just said smart thanks reminds me of startup what's this uh reminds me of startup by gimlet his site blew up documenting founding is coming yeah because you think about it right like you're you're asking the same you're asking the questions that people have been asking since the start of the internet no everyone's got the same questions um just what what will like the way josh answer, answer answers a question is different to me and, Josh may resonate with you. I may resonate with you. Someone else may resonate with you. So different opinions and different voices about exactly the same thing is not a bad thing. I think people think they need to be unique and they need to be different and stuff. No, actually, you just have to communicate it your way and that will resonate with the people that um, like interact with that. And uh, I think uh, I think that's uh, what's missing there. So yeah, great advice from Josh, like the, piggybacking off the Etsy's and the Ebay's and stuff of the world. We we're only just talking about eBay. You know, um, Josh has been following my journey back into reselling. Josh got his start with reselling. It's, um, you know, it's amazing. Um, you know, when there's a will, there's a way, you know, if you need a bit of extra cash, you know, start the store, sell the stuff for eBay, then slowly funnel those people back to your own platform you know that's a good way to to generate that um generate that traffic now josh i wanted to talk to you quickly about the book um so josh uh, for those who don't know josh has actually got where is it there's there's josh there's one of josh's books it's sitting on my uh thing and it's all filled out i've done a full cycle of it so i've got some feedback for you there josh but um um Yes, yeah, so I moved that in there. So yeah, so um, but Josh has also written a children's book. Tell everyone about your um, tell, tell everyone about Mummy's lost um, her voice. Yeah, well, Mummy, so, Mummy uh, has lost her voice. Yeah, yeah. So it was actually uh, picking the kids up one day, and it was um, yeah, just sort of a bit of a joke with them. It wasn't even Mummy at the the thing. It was just a, I think it was a teacher or someone lost her voice, and um, I sort of joked to oh, we should go find it then. Um, in my typical fashion of, of joking around with the boys. And then um, as we were sort of chatting and all that, I said, oh, that would actually make a pretty cool kids book where, um, where um, someone lost their voice and we, you have to go find it in the book. And um, so from there, I actually, that afternoon, I took the boys to swimming and while we were at swimming, I um, wrote the um, concept of the whole book and um, um, then, yeah, organised and worked with an illustrator to um, get it all, all set up. And the idea of the book is that obviously mummy has lost her voice and you go around and try and find it. But um, as you're trying to find it, it's a, a, a counting and a colour book. So, yes, the numbers, are, there's more numbers and things that you have to find in the page that are, they're not finding the voice, but they're finding different things on the on the pages. So it's a bit of an interactive book of, um, yeah, things that you can actually find and everything else. So yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was just one of those things. It was once I once I said to the, um, the kids um, that I um, was that it would make a good book and then I was going to make it into a book I sort of had to do it because I sort of had to show the kids that you once you say something and you put your mind to it you sort of have to do it yeah no and that's and that's um great I it's um you know it's what was it was it quite a difficult process to get a book like that made um, um obviously it was, it's yeah it was yeah, a, this, this interesting and it was different. yeah it was a learning process um a lot involved um yeah, a lot involved in um, the process and everything else and a lot of a learning process as well. So um, like you sort of all the little things that you don't realise and all that and registering to get barcodes and, and the, the right publishing house and, and all the different little things that you need to, to actually put a book out there and, and trademarks and copyrights and, and all the different stuff and, <laughs> and that you don't even, that you don't think about. So it, um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting thing, but yeah, it was, um, I think it was a couple of years ago now that I sort of released it and it's still out there getting sold and, and everything else. There's not as many physical bookshops these days that so the, <laughs> you probably don't see it as much in there. Like even, even up where we are, we used to have a physical bookstore that where you could get it and everything else and then it closed down. But we've got a, a new one opening up very shortly. So I might have to push for them to, to have it so that we've got a local local source yeah, of them. Like yeah. Source of it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so because, um, yeah. 
the kids always enjoyed when they could go into the bookstore and actually see it on the shelves and, and everything like that. So it's um yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you said, you're not you weren't doing it to try and um you know become a millionaire from big writing yeah. books, but you know, it's like you said, I think that's such a you know, it doesn't, you know, it's obviously a trait you want to teach your children. You know, if you commit to something and you promise something, you should see it through. But I actually think there's a distinct lack of that in the industry as well. There's so many people that promise things that don't actually see it through that good or bad, you know, like they'll, um, you know, promise something and, you know, that's, they'll just avoid it. You know, they won't be like, oh, actually, we're not going to hit the mark. Let's work out a solution to, to do it. They just, uh, yeah, they, you know, just fundamental things. And, you know, I think, um, you know, it's the boxing, everything like that. It's, um, yeah, reiterates the importance of that. So um, knowing what you know now, obviously you've been doing the agency, you've had the agency for a long time now. Knowing what you know now about marketing and running this kind of business and, and everything, what would you, what kind of things would you have done differently at the start that would have pushed you a lot further ahead? Or, or um, you know, what are some of the things you did well at the start that um, sort of got you to where you are now? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting question um, because, yeah, I, I always think that the stuff that you're doing is all part of the journey. So you sort of, um, yeah, sort of have to appreciate everything that you learn and do along the way. Um, so, yeah, but it is really, uh, um, thank you, just getting a charger brought down to me. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I think um, one of the big things that, um, I really think is important is the the growth um, side of it. Sorry, I'm just adjusting no, my my life, power of life. Yeah. Mm. I don't know why my picture's not gone there. No idea. I'm going to unplug that because it disappeared. Okay. <laughs> we'll just run. We'll run with it. If it dies, it dies. It's it's fine. Yeah, it's there at the moment. <laughs> so who knows? Um, yeah. So one of the big things was probably the growth stage of the business. So um, at different times, I was probably lost in the in the growth stage and knowing sort of what to do and getting a bit caught up in saying oh yeah i have to go really quickly or i have to do this and everything else because when i first started i was like oh no i don't want to i don't want to grow i don't want a team i just uh, like i'm happy sort of just doing my own thing and everything else but then i got to a point where i was like i want to help more people like and the only way to help more people is to to utilize the team and get more more things and everything else so um it was it was really and then when when i sort of got busy and everything else at certain stages we probably lost some of that vision and everything else um when I, when i was trying to grow and everything else so it was i think going back would be trying to stick to the vision and everything else like the team i've got now and everything else we sort of know where where we're going and what we're trying to achieve and everything else um and we're not trying to go too fast either like i'm not trying to sort of <laughs> build build this big business because it's not really it doesn't align with with sort of where, where my vision was and and helping people um, so yeah, sticking to that sort of initial vision of of being not that normal agency that sort of is focused on sales and and not focused on delivering and everything else, but yeah, being that that helpful person that is just focused on helping people and and everything else and getting that across in in everything we do and and just being actively trying to focus on yeah serving people and and helping them and not focused on the actual money side and all that yeah the money would, money would you, say you had a, would you say yeah. you had like a full circle cycle like a full circle back to that so like that was what it was supposed to be at this like what was at the start then because i'm experiencing a very similar thing right now you mentioned that there's days i wake up and I'm like we've got to expand we've got to get bigger we've got to grow and then there's days i'm like actually um you know it's what why am i thinking like that when you know everything's going well and we're serving we're supporting uh, our clients um and uh, yeah, it's interesting you say that because I'm like exactly going through exactly the same thing. I'm a lot further, you know, time-wise, I'm a lot further further in the start. But like, I think, um, yeah, that's interesting you say that because I think it's like you get you get a bit of like a fud, like a FOMO sort of sort of thing when you see other agencies and they're you know doing their thing and 
I th it sounds like you've gotten comfortable with where, where, where the agency is and where you fit into the digital marketing space or like where JR marketing fits in the, that's what it sounds like to me. Um, yeah. You know, you've, yeah, got, was, you've gotten comfortable. Yeah, it was very much like that. So I sort of thought that I had to sort of give away some of those values to grow. So like I thought I had to be like other, other places and, and sort of, focus on certain stuff and not focus on what I started the, the business for. So I sort of went away from when, when you're sort of growing and you sort of lose a bit of that, that sort of quality of the stuff that you're doing and everything else, because you think, oh yeah, no, I need to focus on, on the growth stuff and I have to do this and I have to do that and, and everything else where, whereas you sort of forget that you can, if everyone's aligned with your vision and, and that there's no reason why you can't grow and, and actually be, aligned with the vision of how you want to grow the agency at the same time so really sticking to those values and, and sticking to to what you how you want to actually grow the business you do, rather than trying to be like everyone else and and it's very much is that fomo of of seeing it and you see all these other ones and you say oh well that guy started started last year and he's got this team of 50 people and he's doing this and oh they're going to be taken over by this company for millions of dollars and they're doing this and you're like oh come on, I've been <laughs> just doing my thing for a while, but you, you sort of think about why you're doing it and, and really focusing on that. Um, the reason why I started it was to, to help people. It wasn't ever about the financial side of it. I knew that I could make money doing certain stuff and uh, there's plenty of options. If I, if I just wanted to make money and everything else, I wouldn't have had to run an agency and everything else, but I think it was focusing on, on really, um, yeah, what, what, the reason I started in the in the first place, and also having the the team around you that is actually focused on that as well. Um, a whole months has sort of reminded us of of that we are here to help our customers in whatever way we can. Um, we spent a lot of time, obviously, in that COVID period, doing whatever we could to to help our our customers survive and adapt and do whatever's needed. Um, and that sort of reminded us multiple times that yeah, the reason we do it and and the reason we do it is to to help so um yeah it's been really about creating it around that that and really creating um the culture of the people around me as well that really want to be at work and 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 really want to be serving people and and helping people and and doing great work yeah it's, it's amazing you say that because like i think i i i learned this pretty early in the piece when i started this that it's actually better sometimes not to watch what other people are doing because you know, this is why I have a lot of respect for you, for you and your agency, Josh, because it's not easy being doing this for as long as you have in this space. There's so many um, agencies that just flash white hot and then just disappear because they've either grown too fast or they've like burned a client and it's like co cooked their reputation. So like being able to, it's like I had um, James over from Not Prosperity Media on here and he's been doing it for seven, eight years as well. And I said that to him, I was like, dude, it's not, it's not necessarily about how big or small you are. It's the fact that you've been in the, you've been able to keep the business going and sustainable and helping clients con consistently for that longer period. You have to have been doing something right. And uh, I think, I think that's not, that's not, um, you know, celebrated enough in this space. It, like everyone celebrates, oh, you know, they um, slick agency, AMG, Mercedes, 50 staff, but you know, they're running like tiny, like tiny margins that like any like COVID or whatever wipes them out. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's interesting that um, you say that because I think uh, if you, if you weren't genuinely thinking, like if you, gen, gen, if you genuinely weren't helping people, you wouldn't have, I don't think the agency would have survived for as long as it has, you know, there's so many that just flash in the pan. Now we've got a quick question from Wendy here. Um, so what are, what are your top three tools you use for SEO or marketing? Yeah. What's, um, what's in the toolkit at JR? Yeah. So, um, probably for SEO, um, as much as there's so many tools, I would actually just use Google. So, um, people forget that you can actually just go to Google and start Googling stuff and Google will actually tell you what, are, what other people are searching for and what keywords are there and everything else. So there's actually just getting on there and getting used to what people are searching, getting to know Google and everything else is going to be probably your biggest benefit. Um, there's so much, cause there's so many tools and they'll give you so much information, so much things that 
it's it's going to complicate your process so much harder. So getting to know your keywords by just searching what you're actually offering and seeing what else people are searching for, what brands are, are getting found in there, what what stuff you should be doing. Um, and the Google algorithm will actually show you who's ranking in the top spots so you can start to see what they're doing and, and how, how you could actually be doing things better. So just using Google itself is great. Um, I mentioned earlier Canva. Um, it's We use it a lot now for, for graphics and everything else. As I said, it saves a lot of time um, versus having to, to really jump in um, and do a lot of lot of stuff. Obviously, we we still use other tools, but it um, it does save a lot of time these days for a, a lot of your social posts and a lot of your other stuff. If you're wanting to get good quality graphics up quickly without having to the thing, and you can obviously have a lot of your brand elements already loaded in there, so that you can keep it all aligned and looking good and all the same. Um, uh, other tools. Um, yeah, I guess SEO and marketing is such a big thing. So it just depends on on what you're trying to achieve and everything else. Because um, I use um, a tool inside our agency um, called Agency Analytics, which is it tracks all our all, all our stuff and does a lot of our reporting. So that's obviously a a big thing in there. But then we have like tools on our website. So we have a, a, a an inquiry bot on our website, which is a, a great tool in, in having on your website of being able to connect with your clients when they're actually on your website and things like that. So I think it tool wise, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, and, and there is so many different ones and you'll probably find different ones that are actually work well with you. Um, and it's the same with like on your website and plugins and different other stuff. You're going to find the ones that actually work well for what you're trying to do because in the end they are a tool so they all they are is assisting you to do something easier or or better so it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and how you can achieve it so but yeah we we use yeah so many different tools on a daily basis um even going back to the google side of it the google workspace and stuff like that and and stuff with the email systems and the google drive and google forms and stuff like that um, as a tool and a system, it, it makes running a business a lot easier and everything else because it, it allows us to do a lot, a lot of stuff. A hundred percent. You stole my thunder. I was going to say Google myself. Um, you know, <laughs> it's something I've gone full circle with as well. It's like, I, I'm, I, I like all the tools and I like using all the fun, you know, fun tools out there from a search um, SEO perspective. But sometimes the best way to find information is just by Googling and, and just seeing the sentiment in the search. Um, but I, I was going to say, I was just going to add to what, um, cause I mean, um, Josh covered it off pretty well. Right. But like, I just wanted to quickly add to that. Um, you know, tools, are, tools are an interesting one because we, I get asked a lot about what tools we use and I'm a big fan. There's tools that work very well, but it's, it's really comes down to the person operating the tool to how effective it actually is. Is like you put the you put agency analytics in the hands. So agency analytics, like Josh was saying, is like an agency tool they can use for like consolidating data, creating reports, and checking rankings, things like that. Um, if you don't know how to operate the tool, or you don't have a good fundamental understanding of say SEO or um, Google Ads or anything like that, then the tool's pretty much useless. So like I think I think that's what people forget is like there's a lot of cool tools out there that do really really cool jobs, but you need to think of them like Josh is saying. It's like Okay, well, if you already know how to chop a tree down um, using an axe, then putting a chainsaw in your hand is going to make the job a lot faster and a lot quicker. But if you don't know the, the direction a tree is going to fall down if you chop it um, because you haven't learned that, then putting a chainsaw in your hands is actually quite dangerous. It's the same sort of principle. So like you can give um, someone that's done, like spent 20 minutes learning SEO, AREFs or something like that, or SEM Rush, like one of the more um, analytical tools, and they could actually they could do a little more damage than you know um, you know than good. So I think I think it comes down to um, you know having an under good fundamental understanding of what you're trying to achieve, and then you start to bring tools in to help speed that process up or make it more efficient. But unless you actually understand how the tools work, uh, like understand the process or the fundamentals, then don't even worry about tools. You know, like um, Dan who was on last week or the week before last week, you know. He, when he started Gearbunch, a lot of it was manual. And then as he started seeing how the market reacted to it, he started implementing tools to make it faster. But every tool that exists out there is just replacing something that can be done by hand. 
So, you know, without um, AREFs, without um, agency analytics, you can still produce reports. It's not like, it's, you know, it's possible to do without them. It just makes it easier and more efficient to do with uh, with tools. So that would be my um, bit to just add to what Josh is saying is that in the right hands, a tool is very, very, very good. In the wrong hands, you might, you, you might as well just not use anything. So um, just keep that in the back of your mind. Now, I just want to quickly touch while we're, while we're here, I know I know you're a busy guy, um, so I won't take up too much more of your time, Josh, but um, daily processes and routines, I'm big on that. I, I'm not as good at it as I should be, but I'm big on processes and routines. So what are some of the, um, some of the tools, going back to tools, you know, what is it, what are you, what are your processes and routines and how do you um, manage to keep so many plates spinning, um, you know, within the agency? Yeah. So I'm very ADHD, so I'm very bad. <laughs> a lot of things I'll, I'll, I'll put in a lot of processes and, and stuff. And a lot of the times, yeah, <laughs> they don't always get used, but it, um, it, um, I think really just making sure that everything's simplified and that you know, um, I like to talk about non-negotiables, so you know what you do have to achieve um, or you do need to do. So whether or not that is that you m must send three emails that day or you must jump on there and do five SEO on five sites or, or something, have your non-negotiables that you can really know what you need to achieve in that day. Um, and blocking out your calendar in that way so that you say, okay, this is the time that I'm spending doing this is going to make it easier. Because if I look at my calendar and I go, oh, I've got a podcast at this time, I've got a meeting at this time and all that, I know what I'm doing in those times. Whereas if I look at it and say, oh, I've got nothing on today, I'm just going to go about my business and, and everything else. So actually using your time and blocking it out when you do want to do something. So if you know that you want to get that hour in the morning of really concentrating and getting your accounting done or getting something that you know need to get done, actually block it out and do it rather than sort of saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I really, I'll put that on a to-do list and I will might do it Never today. <laughs> yeah, actually blocking it out and saying, okay, yes, this is what I'm doing at this time. Um, I, the thing, because it, when you actually see it in there physically, you know, okay, that's what I'm doing at that certain time. Like I knew exactly what cause I had today and that I had a, had this live stream with you and all that, because it was in there and everything else. I knew that, okay, this is what I'm doing at that certain time and everything else. But if I've got free time, it's just sort of like, oh yeah, I'll just jump on Facebook or I'll jump on this or I'll do this or I'll do that and jump between a lot of things. And because I've got a lot happening, I'll just jump a thing and without without actually having a focus for that period of time, I will just have spent that time just jumping around and I might do certain stuff in that time, but it's not a focus time. So if you really want that focus time, make sure that even if it's going to the gym or if it's um, having a set sort of morning schedule or something, make sure that it's in there and you know exactly what your what your schedule is, that you get up at this time and you do this and everything else. Because if you don't, like if I, if I just say, oh, I'll wake up sometime between seven and, and eight o'clock or four o'clock and eight o'clock or whatever, I'm probably just gonna just do whatever. But if I say, okay, I have to get up in the morning at five o'clock because I've got this at 5.30 and I've got this at six and everything else, that's what I'm gonna do because that's what I've set it, it actually in sort of motion. So yeah, um, yeah, that, that'd probably be my biggest tip. As I said, I'm pretty a bit all over the place. So if I don't schedule things in, they will just <laughs> fall about. But then also using using the people around you. I'm big about using, making sure that you're, you're, you're sort of lev leveraging on your team and, and anything else if you've got them. Um, if you don't have a team, leveraging on outsources and, and people like your extended team. So if you've got a marketing person or you've got that, actually use them and, and send them the stuff rather than you sitting there thinking, oh, I have to do this at some time today. Actually say, just flick it off to them and get them to do it because you're going to get a hell of a lot more done when you actually leverage on those people that are around you. Yeah. And, and you know, like I'm a bit like you, Josh, I'm a bit all over the place if I'm not focused and um, blocking out my day. Um, I found the best cure for that is having people that around you that are completionists. They're like, Jimmy, hurry up. We need this. You know, we're waiting on you. It's like, oh, actually people are waiting on me to do something. Okay. I better get it done. Next thing it's done in 10 minutes, you know, but I've been floundering for half a day because I'm like, oh, oh, that's cool. That's a cool meme. Or I'm going to go check their rankings because, you know, they, they've moved one spot and I'm curious. I'm, I like SEO, so I'm curious to see what's happening. And so actually I should just be focusing on the things that people need from me. 
uh, and then a lot would get done. So uh, it's interesting that because um, not obviously not everyone has access to a team. So like even just find someone in your network that you can just hold hold you accountable and vice versa. You know, you just proclamations like, you know, Josh saying he needs to do the fight. You know, it's a pretty big incentive to get into the gym. <laughs> and it, and you once you do it publicly, it's um, you, it's a proclamation. You'll have people and you, and you just say, hold me accountable to this. You know, I want to make sure that I, I'm fit, you know, so... Yeah, I think um, that's a great answer. I think more people need to step away from the actual tools and pro and actually what are the fundamental things that are um, will will make those tools if you do implement them in the future more effective and time blocking and you know just having um, strategies for ma um, managing your time is probably more important than the actual physical tool to do it with. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. Now, obviously, um, you know, I'll, I will start to wind this up here, guys. If you've got any final questions, please, um, please let us know um, as we're sort of uh, towards the end here. Um, now, guys, uh, Josh, if anyone has any other questions for you, uh, you know, that they think of during the day, where can they find you? Um, so um, Instagram's probably the easiest one. Um, so it's Dadpreneur, so nice and easy to remember. Um, Facebook, you can search me up, um, um, send me a message. If it's, if I receive it and it doesn't go to spam or junk, then it's good. But the, I do have a page and I do have a business page. So um, JR Marketing Group, if they need it, um, is our business page. Um, website's jrmg.com.au, so nice and easy um, to, to remember. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it makes it, yeah, makes it really easy. The thing, so you only have to remember four letters, jrmg.com.au. So <laughs> it um, makes, makes it easy. When I first started, it was jrseo. So I um, ended up cutting it down one letter just so it was easier to remember. What did you have to pay for that domain? I don't even know. It, was, uh, it wasn't a, too bad um, in the time. I think it was one that I might have. But saying that, I, I have probably... 700, 800 domains and I probably probably have no idea what I paid for it at the time and, and everything. But it, yeah, um, it's a four-letter domain. It's, it's amazing what some of these... I picked up the other day, I had a guy randomly approach me on Facebook. Um, he's like, oh, you're my online guy. Do you, do you want guy.com.au? I was like, well, sure. Like, what do you want for it? He goes, oh, five grand. I was like, no, I'm not paying that. So I know getting it for 1500 bucks. So I, I own guy.com.au. I was like, you can't, can't hurt have a three letter domain that actually makes a word. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you ever see a men's model magazine or a men's healthcare magazine pop up with guy.com.au, you know where the domain came from because uh, yeah. that's my baby. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, like I know we were supposed to be talking about SEO today, but sometimes I like to just talk about the logistics of, you know, running a business, not necessarily. You know, because SEO is done to death, right? Like, this is a big thing. I, I covered it off on LinkedIn the other day because um, someone called it black magic or dark art. And I was like, nah. I was like, everything there is to know about SEO exists on the internet, um, whether it's YouTube or just the Google Webmaster Guidelines. Like, you, you, you can, anyone can do SEO. Um, it's not, it just some people have more time to commit to it than others. But like, it's not dark, you know, it's been done to death, but like the actual nuts and bolts of running an agency, the nuts and bolts of like um, running a business, there's not that much information about that. So I appreciate you coming on here and taking the time to talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts um, of running an agency. Um, and yeah, guys, if you if you want to pick Josh's brain, uh, Josh's brain, he's a really nice guy, um, jump on, hit him up on the website or Instagram. Um, and just uh, have a chat to a chat to Josh because he really does know his stuff. He's been doing it a long time, and um, you know everyone in Australia, everyone in my network and circle, they're all here to help. So um, go and chat to Josh. Um, I will catch everyone this time next week. Thank you once again, Josh, for being on. And Thank uh, you for yeah, having me next week. No worries. All right, thanks, guys. You're welcome. Catch ya.